But let me now turn to our first session where we have some great speakers who will in a moment focus on some of the ways in which ICT has enabled uh, the 2012 Games. Um, but first, uh, to talk to you about how the government uh, has made the UK a great place to start and grow your ICT business, let me hand over to the Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne. Well, uh, Nick, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for coming here today uh, to the latest in a series of events we've held here at Lancaster House as part of this uh, Olympic Games. Uh, we're here to celebrate the very best of uh, British technology and innovation, help forge new business partnerships with companies and indeed countries around the world. And it was uh, now a week ago, believe it or not, uh, that millions of people tuned into the Olympic opening ceremony and witnessed the wonderful tribute to the British inventor of the World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, what a special moment in the ceremony that was. Uh, not just because it was great to see Tim's achievement honoured in such a generous way, though that was certainly the case, but to me it was so special because what it said about my country, Britain, in 2012. It showed that Britain is a country that is so passionate about technology that an entire section of the opening ceremony of our Olympic Games was dedicated to the man who created the web. And I'm proud that this message was heard around the world last week. And I want you, as you leave this event today, to carry that message with you as well. Because our passion for technology is not only reflected in that brilliant opening ceremony, it is reflected in our economy as a whole. Uh, the statistics are quite staggering. Uh, earlier this year, a report by the Boston Consulting Group showed that the internet economy was responsible for 8.3% of UK GDP, uh, and that was uh, over a year ago. This is a far bigger share than any other G20 economy. The report found that the same is true when it comes to e-commerce. 13.5% of UK purchases were made online in 2010, and that is projected to rise to 23% in 2016. In fact, British shoppers make more purchases online than consumers in any other country in the world. And that isn't just great for retailers, but it also means that a bigger proportion of advertising budgets are spent online in the UK than anywhere else. And that is why the UK web economy is projected to grow at a rate of 11% a year between now and 2016, and that is a growth rate uh, considerably bigger than either the United States's or China's. So it really is no exaggeration to say that the UK is the most wired economy on the planet. And I'm here to tell you that the British government is every bit as pro-technology as our economy. Uh, I challenge you to find another major government anywhere in the world that is more supportive of new technologies or doing more to back technology entrepreneurs uh, and investors. We are pulling out all the stops to ensure that you, the world's leading investors and technology companies, have everything you need to innovate and succeed right here in the United Kingdom. Uh, let me explain how. First of all, being the Chancellor, let me start with taxation. We are making the bold changes to the tax system that businesses and investors need. We're cutting the top rate of income tax. We have cut our corporation tax rate to one of the lowest levels in the G20. And we've introduced the most generous early stage investment tax breaks of any country in the world. And indeed, we're now going to bring in new tax breaks for animation and for video game production. In my view, this video game tax break is a fantastic complement to our long-term incentives for film production, which already exist. These film tax breaks have brought billions of pounds of investments and thousands of new jobs to the UK, and they are very much here to stay. And a great example of that investment is the 100 million pounds that Warner Brothers has invested to create a world-class studio at Leavesden, and I'm pleased to be able to tell you today that the first film to be shot at the Leavesden studio will be the blockbuster, new blockbuster starring Tom Cruise and our own London-born Emily Blunt. That will create 
in itself over 500 jobs, many of which will be in digital and special effects. And this is a great example of how our tax policies are creating the right environment for investment and innovation. But we recognize that technology investors in particular have specific challenges and needs, so we've put in place special policies to help. Take our research and development tax credits, for example, which offer a tax relief of up to 225%. In case you didn't catch that, let me say that again, 225%. So investing £1 million in research and development could mean getting up to £2.25 million in tax relief. No other country in the world uh, can match that. And we're also introducing a tax incentive we're calling the patent box, or patent box, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, which offers a corporation tax rate of just 10% on profits generated from patents created in the UK. So if your company is doing research and development and creating intellectual property, there is really no place in the world uh, better to do it than in the UK right now. These then are the tax policies we put in place to support technology entrepreneurs and investors. But even for a chancellor, taxes and everything. Uh, so let me tell you about some of the other things we're doing to make the UK the best place in the world for technology and innovation. Uh, we know that top business talent is truly global, so we are rolling out the red carpet for the next generation of technology entrepreneurs by introducing a brand new entrepreneur's visa. This entrepreneur's visa enables venture capital-backed startups to move to the UK quickly and easily. So if you're investing in early stage companies outside the European Union, you can bring them to London using this targeted visa. And we're not only changing our immigration system, we're also overhauling the way that ICT is taught in our schools. Uh, for too long, our young people have been taught how to use computer programs, not how to write code. Uh, we are putting an end to this and making sure that our school system is producing the next generation of coders that technology companies need. And we're being just as ambitious when it comes to investing in fiber broadband, the fundamental infrastructure, of course, of the internet economy. Earlier this year, we announced a further £50 million, bringing government investment up to £150 million for ultra-fast broadband rollout in Britain's major cities. That is in addition to the £530 million already committed for super-fast broadband in local areas across the UK. This investment in super-connected cities will mean that the UK has the fastest internet speeds in Europe by 2018, providing the bandwidth that our technology companies need to expand and to flourish. So right across the board, the British government is leading the world when it comes to ensuring that our policies are supporting technology and innovation, not holding it back. And nowhere, ladies and gentlemen, is that more true than it, when it comes to tech city the technology cluster in East London, which is home to some of the UK's most innovative companies, such as Mind Candy and Songkick and Mendeley. And I would urge you, please, while you're here in the UK, to take a visit to Tech City and see it for yourself. In November 2010, the Prime Minister launched the government's major initiative to support growth of this exciting cluster. Ever since then, we've been pulling out all the stops to help this cluster go from strength to strength, We've created a dedicated unit, the Tech City Investment Organization, which can help global investors and companies such as yourselves come to East London. And we're bringing cutting edge research facilities to Tech City to ensure the cluster isn't just at the forefront of today's innovation, but tomorrow's innovation too. Take the Open Data Institute, for example, which is being built in Shoreditch which, with public and private funding. This Open Data Institute will be an incubator where businesses and researchers can come together to work on innovative new products that take advantage of the incredible power of big data. And we're also bringing together two of London's leading universities, indeed two of the leading universities of the world, University College London and Imperial College London, to create a smart cities research centre in Tech City. So it is no wonder that the world's leading technology companies are now beating a path to London. Google has opened a seven-story campus in the heart of Shoreditch, housing literally hundreds of startup entrepreneurs. Intel is establishing a cutting-edge research facility in East London that will develop new technologies to make 21st century cities more connected and efficient. And the likes of Airbnb, Yammer, and General Assembly have made Tech City their European home. In the last week alone, we've seen two of the world's technology giants 
unveil major new investments in London. Facebook has committed to open its first non-US engineering base right here in London. Uh, as the Facebook software engineer Philip Sue puts it, London is a perfect fit for Facebook engineering. And just a few days later, Amazon announced that it was establishing an eight-floor, 47,000-foot square uh, research and development facility in Tech City. And why did Amazon choose Tech City? Well, in their words, it was because London is a hotbed of tech talent. Uh, and of course, I couldn't agree more. And I'm pleased today to be able to reveal three major new investments in Tech City. First of all, Vodafone. Vodafone is today announcing the creation of a new technology lab and incubation center in East London. The Vodafone Zone will help bring together Vodafone's technology experts and VC investors with startup companies in East London. It's a brilliant example of how large companies can support the growth of the Tech City ecosystem, and we thank Vodafone for this investment. Uh, second, uh, there is a new investment in Tech City by Barclays, who are opening a 4,000 square foot space in Shoreditch, right next to the Google campus. This central working hub will be a collaborative space for local entrepreneurs to come together, share ideas, find the support they need to take their company to the next level. And Barclays estimate that this space will help over 10,000 businesses over the next decade, which will be a huge boost to entrepreneurs in East London and beyond. And the third and final new investment that I'm pleased to be able to announce is from GREE, one of the world's largest social gaming uh, companies. It is today announcing that it will establish a new game development studio in Tech City, making most uh, the most of East London's talent base to create the next generation of video games. Uh, taken together, these three major new investments represent a triple whammy for Tech City. And coming so quickly after the announcements from Facebook and Amazon, British technology has hit a purple patch. And you will not find a country anywhere in the world that is more open to technology, more open to investment, more open to business. And you will hear from our friends from British Telecom, from the BBC, from Herman Hauser, about what more we can do to make this country the place to come and invest and create jobs. We're putting in place the right vision, the right policies to help your company succeed right here in the UK. And that's why the world's leading technology companies are now beating a path to our shores. Please enjoy today's event. If you have any questions, ask our team. We will hold your hand and help you invest in the United Kingdom. And we will do everything we can to help you innovate and succeed right here in this country. Thank you very much.